can give me the uh there we go okay so the the waiting room is empty you've got everybody in yes okay so we'll get going here okay hi everybody uh my name is jeff and i'm from ayelet tours and since 1986 we've been connecting people to israel and jewish heritage destinations around the world we are very excited to be partnering once again with the american conference of cantors this time on putting a trip together to argentina uh, some of you in the room right now uh, may have already traveled with us and with the ACC. Uh, we did a uh, an incredible trip to Cuba uh, back in, I believe it was 2019, uh, with uh, several buses, uh, beautiful concerts. And from that, the idea came together to do an Eastern European trip, which just happened this last fall, which was absolutely incredible, moving, powerful experience. And from that, we have come to this next idea we're very excited about, putting together this trip for Argentina uh, this coming February. So uh, today we're going to have a chance to hear from some of the, uh, the people that are uh, behind the scenes and also in front of the scenes putting this trip together. Uh, so we'll go through, we'll hear from a few people. I've got a short PowerPoint that we'll, uh, we'll look at together with some, uh, some of the basic themes and, and experiences that we have uh, planned for you already. Uh, so without further ado, let's uh, let's get going. I'm going to first turn it over for a few words about uh, the, the musical inspiration uh, for this trip to uh, Cantor Tracy Schur of the American Conference of Cantors. Tracy. Hi, everyone, and welcome. Um, I am living in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm the cantor at the temple. And I'm very excited to co-chair the musical part portion of this trip, uh, which I did also in Cuba and Eastern Europe. And um, it is a highlight of my year of planning because we put together concerts that um, build on the traditions of the places that we're going to see uh, that include people who live in the cities where we're visiting. Um, it's a, they're very all-inclusive concerts. And one of the really nice things, I think this is this is particularly special about temple or group tours, adding this musical element, is that anybody who comes on this trip uh, who is interested in singing, you may be in a temple choir with your cantor, you may not be in a temple choir, but really love to sing and want to try this out, you will have an opportunity to sing with uh, all of the cantors who go and all of the other participants from other choirs and people from the, the cities and towns where we're going to be going. So it's a really wonderful, wonderfully inclusive way to bring music into the trip. There'll be an opening, sort of a sing-along concert, mostly to get everybody singing and comfortable and meeting each other. It's more of a, of a social kind of concert. And a big closing concert at the end, we'll have an opportunity to be with each other uh, for Friday night and Saturday morning Shabbat with some wonderful um, musical leaders, cantors, um, some late, some congregants as well. And we'll also have an opportunity in the itinerary to see other musical elements that, um, for example, music, tango, of course. Um, and we get to do these with this new community, all of you, um, anybody who comes on the trip to to share something really special. So I really think in particular, the musical piece of this trip is really um, central uh, in how the relationships build from one to another. So we're really excited. And I've had people in my own congregation say, do I have to sing? Do I have to be musical? No, you absolutely don't. But it will be a treat for you if you like music to see all of the music. And if you like to sing music or if you play an instrument to become involved in all of the concerts. So I look forward to meeting many of you and working with lots of you. Beautiful. Thank you, Tracy. And let me just by way of introduction, so you know who the other people are that you see on your screen right now. Uh, my colleague in uh, actually, he's, he's in Europe, uh, Daron Epstein, who will be a point person for a lot of the planning uh, behind the scenes and putting this all together. 
uh, you'll hear, hear a little bit from him uh, a little later on. Uh, Rachel Roth, uh, who uh, really does incredible work uh, running the ACC, the American Conference of Cantors, who we'll also hear from a little later on. And then I just want to ask uh, Jessica Zimmerman, who is uh, also on the screen, to say a few words. Jesse is one of our extraordinary guides down in Argentina. She's in Buenos Aires. And I'd just uh, like her to say a few words uh, of welcome and introduction about the, uh, the, the Jewish experience uh, traveling and touring in Argentina. Hello, how are you? Welcome in advance to Argentina. I'm looking forward to welcoming you. I am. Uh, I work in tourism. I am a tour guide specialized in Jewish experiences in Argentina, so I am very involved. I am very excited. Don't ask me to think. I have no idea how to sing. I can dance, but our Jewish community is really it's very alive. We are not so big if I compare with some cities in New York. We are around 200,000 in the whole country, but we are quite noisy. We have amazing amount of synagogue, amazing. We have a, over a 35 Jewish day school in the country, over 70 synagogue in the city. So it's really a very alive community and a lot of things that I would love to share with you. Um, and talking also about um, Argentina, we export so many cantors, Hassanim, to U.S. That is going to be great to welcome uh, you in my house as well, in Buenos Aires City, where I am. And the culture in Argentina, in Buenos Aires, Buenos Aires City, it's also, uh, it's considered one of the best cities in the world, talking about culture and in general. And of course, we have some connection with the Jewish culture as well. You mentioned, Tracy, about the tango. We have also a lot of linking between the tango and the Yiddish. So I'm sure we are going to have a great time and we are going to have the chance to experience Argentina and the Jewish Argentina as well. Thank you, Jesse. Really appreciate it. All right, I'm going to go through relatively quickly just a, a PowerPoint presentation to highlight some of the uh, the highlights of what we're going to do together uh, in Argentina, and then we'll uh, we'll go on from there. Hold on one second while I do my favorite part of any Zoom meeting, which is trying to figure out how to get the PowerPoint slideshow to show up. Give me one second. Hold on. Do PowerPoint start. All right, so. Uh, there we go. Okay. Can I get a, a, a thumbs up uh, if you can see the opening slide? Yay. Okay, great. So, first of all, uh, every one of you has a reason why you showed up to this meeting. Maybe you've traveled with us before on one of the other ACC trips. Maybe you uh, are interested in Argentinian culture, uh, you like Argentinian wine, you're uh, a big fan of tango, whatever it is that brought you into this meeting today, uh, I can tell you that this trip will encompass that uh, and more. For, for me, trips like this, uh, it's, it's above and beyond all of those things and the connecting with the Jewish community and the touring that we're gonna do together and the meals that we're gonna share and the concerts and all of those things, for me, it's the spaces in between. So it's the opportunity to meet people over breakfast in the morning. It's uh, sitting uh, in the, the lobby of the hotel in the, in the evening and the conversations you have and the connections that, that you make. Um, you know, we, we hear over and over again about uh, the, the, the long lasting connections that are created on trips like these. So uh, above and beyond the things that I'm gonna go through with you now, just, just know that this, uh, this is an opportunity to connect uh, in, in just a, a beautiful way. Uh, if you've traveled with us before, if you've traveled with the ACC, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, here we go. All right, so first and foremost, uh, any trip that we're putting together, uh, as I said at the beginning, our, our purpose for existence, <clears throat> excuse me, is connecting people to Israel and the Jewish world. So that's gonna mean the opportunity for face-to-face -face encounters. You're going to meet with, uh, with leadership from the progressive Jewish communities uh, in Argentina. You're going to uh, meet more generally with leaders from the Jewish community down there. <clears throat> and even uh, beyond just meeting with them, we're going to have uh, opportunities outside of the Jewish community. It says the Madres of the Plaza de Mayo will go on a Thursday when they gather as, as they have for years and years and hear their story. 
Uh, and we're also going to work into the program an opportunity to, to give back. Uh, uh, we recently had a, a trip there. Uh, there's a picture there where uh, the group volunteered to do a, a bike build for, uh, for kids in need. So we're going to have various uh, Tikkun Olam opportunities that we're going we're gonna to put together and offer as part of the trip. So in addition to the touring and all of these sorts of things, we're going to have these, uh, these interactive experiences, which are so meaningful. As, as Tracy spoke about, uh, we're going to have incredible musical experiences. Uh, that's a picture of the concert we did in Prague this past October with the ACC uh, at the Spanish Synagogue, which was so incredibly meaningful. So, uh, yes, we'll have the sing-along that first night, which will be fun and, and interactive. We'll have the, uh, the more formal uh, uh, farewell concert or final concert at the end. And uh, as I mentioned, the thing for me is really the spaces in between. And that's what it says here, Mi many musical moments throughout. Uh, so various sites, various places, uh, you're going to have music that's kind of interwoven into the trip itself. And that's, you know, those are memorable moments. It's, uh, it's really something special when, when you're traveling, something that you can't get on a trip in any other way. You've got to, got to travel on a trip with the ACC to get these, these sorts of experiences. Uh, in addition, there's going to be a fair number of artistic and culinary experiences uh, in the trip. It's already been mentioned. There will be tango, uh, not only seeing tango, but uh, but experiencing tango. So, uh, you know, do your stretches beforehand. We'll have a little bit of an opportunity to uh, to take a tango lesson while we're down there. Uh, there's going to be an optional culinary experience. If you're interested in the, the cuisine, the, uh, the, the food of the region, uh, there'll be an optional, uh, what's called the Argentinian experience. You go, you make empanadas, you try uh, incredible steak, you uh, taste their, uh, the, their wines, the Melvick wines, uh, all of that and more uh, in, in that uh, experience. And then, of course, culturally, uh, there's going to be lots of experiences to see the art, uh, the culture, the music, the dance of the region, including visiting uh, the Museo Nacional de Bellas Artes, which has uh, incredible, uh, world-class, outstanding art on display throughout. And then in the center of the trip, we get a chance to go see Iguazu Falls, which uh, as it says there, wider than Victoria Falls, higher than Niagara Falls, and more beautiful than both. Uh, it, it is truly an awe-inspiring experience to be there. Uh, you might ask why we designed the trip the way we did, which if you've taken a look at the itinerary, you'll see it's it's essentially like a, a sandwich with Buenos Aires at the beginning and the end and Iguazu in the middle. We've done this to work with the flights, which we'll talk uh, about a little bit later. Getting international flights in and out of Iguazu, uh, it's a little bit more difficult. So this way you can uh, fly into and out of Buenos Aires. And then we're going to take care of the group flights in and out of Iguazu for the entire group. That's uh, that's part of the, the group package. So uh, that's why we did it that way. Uh, this is a very long quote. Um, I won't read it the, the whole way through, but this is from a, a recent participant uh, in a, one of the trips that we put together from uh, to Argentina. Uh, basically, uh, da, 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 our unanimous conclusion was that this journey arranged by Ayala exceeded all our expectations. The rioting wonder of it all filled our hearts. Palermo's beautiful parks and building buildings wowed us. Our visit to the Hebraica JCC uh, as did the site of the AMIA bombing and the incredible beauty of El Calafate, Barloche, Iguazu, and Rio moved us. Um, it's, we get lots and lots of emails like this, and uh, it's, frankly, these are just incredible trips. So uh, I just wanted you to have a chance to see that. Okay, some of the, the, the basics, and all of this, by the way, can be found on the website, which hopefully you've all had a chance to take a look uh, at. As I mentioned before, in terms of sequence, it's February 15th through 24th with Buenos Aires for the first two nights, then Iguazu for two nights, and then back to Buenos Aires for uh, the final three nights before flying back to uh, North America. Uh, all of the pricing that's listed there, you'll see there are two hotel levels for the trip, Deluxe and Deluxe Plus. You can choose either level. You're welcome to choose either level. There's a discount if you're paying by check. It's a little less expensive than if you're paying by credit card. Uh, the pricing is based on double occupancy. And so if you are single and you uh, are in a single room, you pay what's called the single supplement that's listed there as well. 
But as I mentioned, you can save a little bit by paying by check, and you can also save a little bit by registering early. There's a $150 early bird for anybody that has sent in their initial deposit and registration before May 1st. So you've got a couple of weeks to think about that. That's coming up. And then finally, uh, in addition to that, uh, the basic tour, we are working on extensions. So right now, the possibilities, and we're waiting to see uh, which are the most popular, which ones we're going to offer. Uh, number one is potentially uh, potentially doing a post tour to Mendoza, which is Argentinian wine country, very very beautiful, and of course sample the the wines there. Uh, number two is Moisesville, which has an incredible story to tell. There's a picture of that in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Uh, these are uh, Russian Jews escaping uh, pogroms uh, and came in the late 1800s to establish a kind of an uh, agricultural community uh, in the north of Argentina. It's an incredible uh, experience. Uh, and then Patagonia, going down to uh, the glaciers, Calafate. You can see that in the picture. It's absolutely spectacular. So. All of that is uh, is to get to this last slide and let you know, as I mentioned, about the early bird register by May 1st, you'll save $150. We're also gonna do a raffle, another reason for you to register before May 1st. One person that has registered by that point will be pulled from everybody that has registered to win an extra $1,000 discount. So you have multiple incentives to register early. Uh, the, uh, the link is at the top, top of the screen. There's a little QR code. Uh, we're gonna get to a lot more, but just so you have this, and of course this is recorded if anybody needs to go back and, and see anything. I went through relatively quickly, uh, but of course we'll have Q&A at the end. So any questions that you have, you can put them in the chat uh, and we'll get to them a little bit later. Okay, having said all that, I'm going to turn it over for uh, a moment to Rachel from the ACC to say a few words, and we'll continue from there. Rachel. I am coming back on screen. There Hi. Thank you all for joining us. It is such a pleasure to welcome you all to this Zoom, and I hope that we have the opportunity to welcome you to Buenos Aires as well. The ACC is so pleased to be able to offer these opportunities for people to travel with your cantor, your synagogue musician, um, or other cantors and synagogue musicians. So please don't feel if you don't have a cantor who happens to be hosting a trip that you can't join us. We'd love to have you. The trip is open to everyone. Uh, you don't have to be Jewish. You don't have to be a member of a synagogue. Um, and your synagogue doesn't have to have a cantor. If you love Jewish music and you want to have the opportunity to travel to Argentina with us um, and learn something about the culture and the history, well, we'd love to have you. So reach out to me, reach out to Jeff, reach out to Darone, and we will make sure that we make it happen. And it looks like Jeff froze for just a second. Um. There he is. He's back. There we go. You, you, you can hear me? Okay, good. All right. Uh, so before we turn it over to uh, open it up to Q&A, and I see we've already got a lot of questions that have come in, uh, we had asked uh, uh, Tracy to have one of the people that had traveled with her, with Cantor Scherr, to Eastern Europe on the ACC this trust past October to speak a little bit about their experience. So, uh Oh, there she is right here, Benita, who is with us in uh, in uh, Eastern Europe. So, Benita, if you'd like to say a few words about your experience as a, as a non-Cantor participant on the Eastern European trip. Uh, one second. All right. Am I unmuted? You're unmuted. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's hard to do. Um, what can I say? It's like, yes, all of what they said, that's what I experienced. I had never been to Poland before or to Prague. Some of the people on the trip had been, and in conversations, they, they thought it was a completely different experience as, than what they had before, and it was beautiful in its own way. So even if you've been to Argentina, like I have in the past, and I've also been to Iguazu Falls, I am looking forward to it again because the interaction with the people on the trip make it a completely different experience. And it, it was a wonderful experience. I 
went with my cantor and our marvelous piano player musician. And I went with people that I had seen at Temple, but I didn't really know. And I got to know some of them on the trip. And we refer to each other as Polish treasure because of the bonds that we made there. And, <clears throat> um, and the food was great. So I assume it's gonna be in Argentina. I know it's great, I've been there before. And that's, um, and I'm not a great singer, but I love to sing. So anybody who's not a great singer, but loves to sing is going to be as welcome as I was. And I was made to feel very welcome. And Duran was great. <laughs> it's just masterful at taking care of everything. Um, that's it. The Beautiful. only thing, other thing I wanted to mention is my husband and I went to, to Buenos Aires for two weeks, just in Buenos Aires, and then another three days in Iguazu, Iguazu Falls. And we went there with a group from L.A. to study tango. And my original teacher, who also spent six weeks with me in L.A., is still there, not performing anymore. He performed with the original Forever Tango, but he supposedly has the best tango school in Buenos Aires. And his name is, um, uh, oh gosh, I just blanked out, and Carlos Capello, Carlos Capello. So check him out, too. All right. Okay. I'm, definitely, I'm definitely going to go to see him. Beautiful. Benita, thank you so much. And, and you know, it's it's so funny that you would say that uh, at the end in terms of your, your, your tango connection, because that happens very often when we put a trip like this together is once we've created the uh, the experience, then all of a sudden people start coming to us and saying, you know what, you're putting this trip together. I've got this amazing connection that you can utilize while you're down there. And uh, and we we don't dismiss that. We take that and we try to incorporate it in, into the trip because uh, th these are often amazing connections. So, uh, you know, as opposed well, to going through every day. Uh, perfect. OK, let us know. But uh, and, and we've already had other experiences like that with with Argentina, where uh, people say, you know, we've got this amazing connection. You can incorporate it into the itinerary. So um, even though there's already an itinerary on the website, you can go and you can look and see exactly what it says day to day. We are we're not uh, we're not going to end up with the program being exactly like that, because these opportunities are going to arise as we get closer to, to the February tour. And we're going to take advantage of those of those uh programs and try to weave them into uh into the itinerary so just so you know that's going on okay uh now i'm going to turn it over to my colleague uh Daron, uh who's going to take it from here to uh moderate all of the the q a all right wonderful thank you jeff so first of all i'm so happy as i'm looking over the faces and the names uh, there's a bunch of people i remember from eastern europe uh driving you around in my car or sing, hearing you sing or you trying to get me to sing and others around. So very good to see you again. Hope to see you in Argentina uh, while I won't sing there either, just so all of you can come back home with your ears. Um, so please, if you have questions, uh, we're going to go over the meeting chat first. And then after that, uh, we'll let people raise their hands. Uh, Rachel, uh, as uh, you're very good at um, going through the Q&A. Would you like to uh, sure. ask the questions? So the awesome. first question was, someone wanted to know if they can join Tracy's boss. And the answer is that if your cantor is not coming, but you have a relationship with another cantor, please feel free to register under that cantor's name. And then you will be attached to them and to their boss. If you don't know any of the cantors, call me and we'll figure out geographically or um, musically or whatever the, uh, the situation might be, who best to put you in. So I figured I'd answer that one, Jerome. Um, Good answer. For you. Thank you. The next question is, what are the distances from Buenos Aires to Moisesville and to Patagonia? Uh, they're both flights. flights. So, yeah, they're both flights. Uh, to Patagonia, you're going to fly to El Calafate. Uh, and uh, to Moisesville, you're going to fly to Santa Fe, if I'm not mistaken. Jessica, jump in to correct me. Um, and uh, so they're both flights. Santa Fe is a, is a quicker flight. It's about an hour and something minutes. And uh, uh, Conte, I think, is two hours, something like that. Um, but 
domestic bites. Um, wonderful. Thank you. The next question is, if someone's not Jewish, is there something they can do if they don't want to attend a concert or a service? And is there time for independent time? Is there a limit? Uh, let's answer those two first, because there's a bunch of questions. So uh, I know uh, for a fact on the past tour in Eastern Europe, uh, there were, I'm going to call it Central Europe because it's Central Europe. Uh, there were uh, there were a number of non-Jewish people. You're welcome to join. Uh, the trip is inclusive to everyone. Uh, and you're welcome not to join anything while you're traveling. So if there's something you don't want to do, you're welcome to do so. But please let our staff know. Uh, and because uh, for those of you who are with us in Europe, uh, you know that I like to know where everyone is at every second. So just let our staff know so we can keep our eyes on you and not forget you in the middle of Iguazu Falls. Uh, but you don't have to do anything. Um, it, and there's independent time. So there's time to go off and, and do stuff on our own. There is independent time uh, for those of you who have friends, family, want to shop, who want to buy me gifts. You're always welcome to. Is there a limit to how many people can attend? And nope. how are we broken up when we have a lot of people? That is, that is a wonderful question. So for those of you in Europe, I'm uh, who are in Europe, uh, I'm sure that you... Uh, that you already experienced this, you're traveling on a very big uh, tour, right? So hopefully 7 million, no, I'm kidding, a couple uh, tens of people, 100, 150, something around there, uh, maybe more, maybe less, uh, but you are going to be with your bus. So let's say that you are with Cantor Claire Franco, your bus will be Cantor Claire Franco's and anyone who's on that bus, that's the people you're going to see all the time. When will you see everyone else? So you will see everyone else when during the concerts, so the welcome uh, sing along, the farewell and Shabbat services and anything of that sort. When you are traveling, you're not going to see everyone else. It's not like you're going together into the museum and you have 100 people trying to come in together. No, we time it out. So you are separate and uh, you have your own private experience, which is why there's also private musical experiences as well, because if you go to a place where you can sing just the cantors on the bus and the musicians on the bus, we welcome it. It's one of the things that make this trip so special. What is the deposit amount and is it refundable? So the deposit is $500 per person. The cancellation terms are during uh, the booking process. Uh, it is uh, $250 non-refundable uh, and $250 is refundable until 90 days before departure, if I'm not mistaken. And 90 days before departure, that's when final payment is due as well. We will, of course, remind you uh, and send you reminders for final payment and about everything else. But that's the right now. Final payments usually do about, what, 60 days out? 90. 90, 90 days. days out? Okay. Thank Three months. You. Three months out. Um, how many canters do we have participating? Do you know yet? I don't know if we know in total. The more the merrier. Every cantor brings another uh, level of music to the set, to the group. I think at the moment we're around 15, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but if uh, your cantor is not on the list, go poke them until they join. Uh, we, wanna, we want them more and more and more. Uh, it makes uh, Tracy and Claire's job much more difficult, which makes me laugh. So let's try. So we don't have a total number of participants yet. The goal for each cantor is to try to have at least 10 of their congregants join. Some have more, some have less. Um, so we we don't quite know how many total attendees we will have yet. Uh, we talked about the payments. We don't have a maximum a number of people. We can accommodate everyone who comes. There's a question about airfare and booking airfare. Any tips? Should should we wait to see what IELTS secures in terms of group travel? So we literally just now sent uh, sent an email to add on to our system our group uh, travel options, which also includes recommended flights. Uh, if you do not want to travel on those group flights, you are welcome to book your travel by yourself or through our um, air department who can help you with upgrade cl business class, first class, or anything of the sort. Uh, we usually recommend to use the American carriers because there's more direct flights, but there are a number of South American carriers that are sometimes a little bit less expensive, but then you need to connect through Panama or someplace like that. 
Uh, the specific hotel options I dropped into the Q&A box, and it's also on the registration page uh, for the folks who have asked that question. Um, there is a question here about accessibility, so I do want to address that to the entire group, um, and then we can absolutely have an offline conversation about it. Jerome, do you want to address it? Do you want me to address it? Let's, so, let's let you start. Okay. So in terms of accessibility, we do our best to make sure that the majority of the locations and, of course, our hotels do have accessibility options. Um, of course, it is also South America, and, and the their regulations and their buildings are a little bit different than ours. There potentially can be places that will be more difficult to access. Um, and perhaps Jesse can can also speak to, to some of this, but we will do our best um, in terms of accommodations and making sure that people can access as much of the trip as possible. So I don't want to put Jesse on the spot, but she's shaking her head yes that that that's um, uh, you know that that it's doable. Yeah, I'm like Buenos Aires itself. I mean, like it's not like first world country, but it's quite easy. We have the experience already. And including in the Iwasu Falls, we can, uh, it's possible to hire wheelchairs and we can do the path with wheelchairs. And, and also we need some people who push them as well. No, we need to book both of them. Great, thank you. Uh, how hot is it in Buenos Aires in February? This seems like a Jesse question again. Hot, you say? How hot? What's the temperature? It's around 90 plus, 95. It depends. <laughs> so it'll be warm. It could be less. It could be less. Yeah, we were, the we were surprised in October here with the uh, warmer than we thought it would be. So it might be less. Today it's no. London and it's very unusual to have a London day in the city. So it changes. So it could be between 85. Yeah, yeah. It's summer. It's summer. Absolutely. Um, how long are the extensions and do you still book round trip through Buenos Aires? So the extensions are three to four days, somewhere around that. Uh, the round trip will still be through Buenos Aires. So the, the, the idea is always to end the tour in a place with an international hub. Question for you. The... If I look at the dates right, we're starting on the, was it this, my brain just froze. Is it the 15th or 16th of February? We're starting the, on the 15th. We're starting on a Sunday. So it would be an overnight flight on Saturday night after Shabbat. So you can come in on the 14th if you want, basically. So February 15th is the start and it's ending February 24th in the evening, correct? So the so the first night in Buenos Aires is the sixteenth. The overnight flight is on the fifteenth. Um, you can Wait, come you just, in. Stop, 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 stop! You just lost me. Okay, so I, I will run through this, and if uh, if we need to, uh, can you're we can starting have on Sunday the fifteenth. So we need to be in Buenos Aires Sunday the fifteenth. Is that correct? Yes. Correct. Yes. And then we're coming back out on the twenty fourth. Correct. In the evening. Yeah. In the evening. So if there's a one o five flight on the of 0105, which is the nonstop coming out of Buenos Aires to D.C., that's technically the 25th, but that is the evening of the 24th, basically. Am I getting that right? That... Exactly. Yes. Okay. Just want to make sure. Yeah. Okay, so you can come in on the 14th, but we're starting on the 15th and going back out on the 24th in the evening. Okay, that's just... I, because I, I had the dates last time to your... Came in a day early, but that was okay. But okay, thank yeah, you. I think I think we'll talk about this after because I'm not sure you have it exactly, but this doesn't pertain to everyone. So I'll call you after this uh, and we'll discuss it. Okay. okay. Absolutely. Um, so we have a few more questions, and I also see that Cantor Claire Franco joined us. So let me get through the rest that are in the chat. Um, thank you to those couple of people um, who have traveled with us before. It's lovely to see you, Andy and Toby. Um how do you find out which canters are going? So the quickest way is actually when you go into the registration form, 
and you click on the list there, when you click, there's a list of the canters who are uh, currently hosting. And if your canter is not on the list, ask your canter if they'd like to lead a trip. The price does not include the airfare to and from Argentina, but it includes the internal airfare. So it will include the cost of the flight to Iguazu Falls and back to Buenos Aires. And if you do an extension, it will include the cost of the airfare from Buenos Aires to the extension, and then from the extension back to Buenos Aires. Um, can you sign up for a single and then add a roommate and change later, Jerome? Yes, 100%. You can also sign up with a roommate and then take them off uh, at the end. I could make a joke here, but Jonathan's not here to laugh at me. Um, uh, how many people? How many people per bus, approximately? Uh, so it depends on the makeup of the groups joining canters and uh, things of the sort, but between twenty five to thirty five usually. Okay. Um, and let's see. It looks like Toby has her hand out. Toby, you have a question. You're still muted. Uh, yes, I can see I'm still muted. Um, I understand that in, in uh, Argentina, it is summer in February. And that yeah. question about the weather, I think the answer that we got was, what is the temperature now? I don't know. I don't care what the temperature is now. I want to know, is it summer in Argentina in February? Yes, it is. Yes. It is summer it is. in Argentina in February. And I have been warned. I will not it be does, cold this time like it I does was get in warm, <laughs> but there is air conditioning on the buses. <laughs> there is air conditioning in the hotel. I can promise you, I'm a person who does not like heat. I live in Prague for a reason and not in my uh, lovely Israel because of the heat. So um, I will make sure that the air conditioning works everywhere. Yes. And I, I also want to say from past experience, do not book your airfare until you're sure you're taking an extension or not. Agree. Oh, Thank you, Toby. I got I I got caught in that trap. I won't make that mistake again. Excellent advice. Thank also, you. See Susan Kaufman, you have your hand up. Yeah, hi, how are you? Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nice to I see just you. want to make sure someone on the trip last time knows that I have a tendency to get lost in the airport. So <laughs> so I want to know, is this a direct flight? Um there are direct flights from a number of uh, places. Atlanta, our group flights are direct flights from New York, Miami, and Dallas. There is a direct from Atlanta with Delta, uh, okay. but they don't give us group space, so you can book it by yourself. That's okay. I'm just kind of teasing because, you know, I'll have somebody guide me by the hand, but it was kind of funny. Anyway, thank you for that information. Thanks, Susan. Nice to see you. <laughs> nice to see but, you. Um. You know, we we have I'm many Susan, people. By the way. So, yeah, don't blame her for that. It's sorry. Sick. Thank you. Um, we you know we we quite often um, travel to Israel in the height of the hottest of the seasons in July, right? June and July is when many many congregational trips happen to Israel. Um, we just we honestly don't know what the weather is going to be. And, you know, we do hope that people will join us and come with us on this trip. Of course, if there are vaccinations and other precautions and other things, IELA will provide us with all of that information, um, you know, in advance. But if that is something that is a concern for you, perhaps you wait until we reschedule Morocco um, or you come with us on, on another one of our adventures. So I did notice that Cantor Claire Franco joined us. Would you right, like to say right, hello? Right, right. Hello. Wait. I've been here for, I got here like five minutes late. I've been here. It's lovely to see people. I, that I didn't have everybody on the screen. No, yes. not at all offended. I am delighted to see people I know, people I don't know, uh, people I kind of know, and people I probably should know, but don't um, remember. But very excited. I I grew up in Florida. And um, so, but I now live in New York, which is just as hot in the summer. And I've worked at summer camp and I like the air conditioning. And if I can do it, just about anybody can. So I'm a delicate flower, as I'm fond of saying, but uh, my people know that. Um, but looking forward to traveling and uh, 
you ha you're in no better hands than with Ayala and and Rachel and Tracy, who's a seasoned professional at these kinds of trips. And uh, we're, we're going to do our very best to make it just a wonderful, exciting adventure. Thank you, Cantor Franco. I Thank do you. see a few other Cantors that are poking their heads around in here. So I'm happy to see you all here. Um, other questions that uh, that people have not an asked yet. Let me see. Um, How many Jews in Argentina? I'm sorry? How many Jews in Argentina now? Jessica can answer. Jessica. It's around 200,000. About 200,000. Thank you. Great. So as, uh, as we're coming uh, to an end here, uh, I I assume we're coming to an end. Uh, yes, we are. So first of all, thank you everyone for joining uh, for joining uh, this Zoom for the informational session. If you have more questions, personal questions, queries, things like that, you all should have my email, can have my email. My email is my name, Daron at ayala.com. And I assume Rachel is typing it into the chat as we speak. Um, and you can send them all to me if you want to speak to me over the phone. I think I spoke to everyone in our last trip. And I'm happy to speak to you this time as well. Um, we will go over all the questions and we will send recommendations to things that are current and, and uh, changing as things go along. As we all know, the world changes a lot every day, especially these days. Uh, I am very, very excited to, to explore with you, show, show you and uh, hear with you the music that I will not be singing in uh, Argentina. Uh, to show, to talk to Sergio Bergman and so many other very important, uh, influential Jews of Argentina. Um, so I will look forward uh, to seeing you there uh, with all of you. And uh, Rachel, I think you have uh, some uh, music to play for everyone, don't you? I, I do, um, but I'm not sure that it's actually going to work at the moment because my computer is not cooperating. So no we need. will send out a link. Um, and yes, we will also send the link to this recording. So we welcome you to share it. We welcome you to share it with people who you would like to convince to join you or to send it to your canter to say, hey, come host this. And there we can absolutely schedule more Zooms. Daron and Jeff are always happy to also schedule a Zoom congregationally by canter. So, or a couple of canters who might be hosting a trip together. Um, or it, from the same area, we are happy to um, to also arrange for additional Zooms. Susan, I see you have your hand up again. Um, you're muted, so you're muted. I probably missed the answer, but I just want to know, to sign up by, by May 1st, the latest, do you need to pay the $500? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's a Thank you. dollars deposit. Um, Jerome has dropped it, the link in. I've dropped the link into the chat. Um, and, uh, happy to see you. Oh, Andy, Andy's waving at us furiously. Andy, sorry. I, I just wanted to say that I'm sure there are cantors who do not yet know if their congregational commitments and schedules will allow them to go on this trip. And when they, that situation clarifies for the individual cantors, we may well find more cantors showing up. I know that's a situation here where I live and, uh, I suspect that you'll have some other canters signing up and people may come just because they like you and Tracy Sharp and others. And, try to frank and me. And, and you. Me. And yes. Me. And you. 100%. So <laughs> what we would recommend, or at least what I'm going to recommend because I'm seeing it on the IELTS site, is when you go to register, when you click on the level of hotels, there's a spot that says, I am joining. And there's a drop down list of the cantors who are currently signed up. There's a spot that says other, please specify name. Write in your cantor's name if they're not yet on the list, because that way Jerome and Jeff can follow up with them and see if they are indeed coming. And, it, and if for some reason they're not able to, we'll at least have a geographical idea of where you are and perhaps we can match you with another congregational group somewhere in your region of North America. Um, so that's probably the best. If you um, 
are not affiliated with a canter at all, you're welcome to either sign up as travel independently or just ACC, probably just ACC is easier. Um, and then that way we'll just make sure that we um, scoot you into a bus. All right, uh, Toby has an, another question. You're muted, Toby. I know, I'm muted again. Sorry. I do have one more question. I believe that I do have a roommate, I think. But in case I don't, you muted. You muted in the end of the question, but we assume that uh, the end of the question is: Can we pair you with a, a roommate? And uh, we've had this discussion before. I went to Europe, but I, I'm hoping maybe that the answer has changed. The the answer uh, I'm pretty sure that this is Jerome's answer because it's usually the ACC's answer is: We'll try. We will do our best to find someone who is staying in the same level of hotels. And, um, you know, we, we will do our best to try to match folks with roommates. We definitely look at the list as to who signs up as a, um, you know, who wants to pair up with sure, someone. Sure, sure. Uh, but we can't, we can't guarantee it because we just don't know. But we certainly do try. Gotcha. Yeah. Hi. Hi, Ken. Yes, I see you and I remember you. Absolutely. I remember you. And How yes, you we will. We will send out the Zoom. Um, we'll send the Zoom to everyone who's on the Zoom registration list. And we will also send it out to other people who have traveled with us before. And so, who, so if, uh, if we shut down now and I go back into into my email, will I be able to register from the email? You'll yeah. get, if you give me about a half an hour, you're going to get another email from the ACC and or Jerome, whoever can get it done first, probably me. Yes, um, I'm, I'm going one, one way or another, I am going. So it, it's, Love it. you know, it's, it's a new point. I am going. Love it. All right. That well, is Toby, a wonderful way to end. The link. Perfect. I will be Any there with you, Toby. Any other questions? Awesome. All right. I'm going to hit the stop recording. Um, so thank, thank you, you all so much. Looking forward thank to seeing you in Buenos Aires. Thank you, everyone.